What's up guys, welcome to a new video and in this one I'm going to show you how you can make your own shopping cart in Django. And so what you're seeing on the screen right now is a finished version of this project. So I'm going to walk you through what it actually looks like so you can get a better idea of what we're working towards in this tutorial. So basically what you're seeing here on the screen is four products, each with the option to add this product to the cart. And if I do that, we get a notification that says item added to cart and I now have this option to go to the cart. So if I do that, I go to the cart and I can see here's this table that's showing me the information for the cart, the item number, the name of this item, which in this case is an ebook, the price and then the order total and then some options. And if I want to delete that, that item, I can delete that right there. And it gives me the notification saying the item has been deleted. You have no items in your cart and we can only go back to continue shopping. So if we do that, now the option has changed back to add this item back to the cart. So if we do that for some more, let's add this one and another one and say go to cart. Now we have another two here and you can see that the order total calculates the sum of these two over here. So now if I say proceed to the checkout, we jump to this new screen here where you can then see the order summary. You have two options to pay. We're not actually covering how to how to use payment APIs. So we're not. that's not the focus of this tutorial. That will be covered in the next part of this um, of the shopping cart where we'll introduce payments but for now we're just showing you the logic behind the actual shopping cart and then you have the option for entering a voucher which is just for display as well for now so if we want we can just say pay with card if I do that then it's just going to go through a dummy function and it says thank you your items have been added to your profile so there's no actual payment that went off but you can see that it's now here uh, on the user's profile we can see the actual order that went through the reference code the items and the price and then I can continue shopping and you'll see now it says you own this for this actual product so a lot of things you can actually customize but the whole premise of this project or tutorial is to show you the logic behind buying something buying in inverted commas and actually adding that to a user profile to say that this user actually owns certain items and so this kind of system would be working for like a digital product system this isn't for something like physical delivery of goods so with all of that being said let's jump into this tutorial okay so for this tutorial i'm not going to be coding line by line i'm going to show you the finished product and so if you aren't really familiar with django then i suggest you watch some of the other beginner tutorials on this channel and in fact there are many other youtube channels that show beginner tutorials for Django. So if you aren't familiar, then check out some other stuff before you come back to this tutorial, because this one is a little bit more toned for intermediate users. So what I'm going to do is jump into the accounts app and into the models. And this is just to quickly show you what's already been done, and then we'll jump straight into the shopping cart. So here we've got a profile object, and all it is is just related to the user on a one-to-one -one field and then defining this ebooks which is a many-to-many -many field with the products that we'll be dealing with so basically the pro the profile model is just a way of capturing what the user actually owns so hence this many-to-many -many field and then we have a signal here which is just saying that every time a user signs up they automatically have a profile associated with them because otherwise if they didn't have a profile then how would we assign anything that they buy so hence the signal and then in the views we just have this basic view which is grabbing the actual user and then showing the orders that this user has actually made so hence filtering the order by it being ordered so is ordered equals true and then grabbing that user profile cool so that's the accounts and then we have the products the products just very, is very simple just a name and a price and then in the views, we have a product list, which is the actual view that you were, you were um, that was going through to make you see what the intro of this video was. So if I just refresh this here, this view here, that is this function here, this product list. So this is very basic. I'll let you go through that as well. And then we just have templates. This is the product list template, which is correlating with this view as well. Cool. So let's check out the shopping cart so the first thing we always do is we specify the models 
And in this case, there are two models. We have an order item and we have an order. An order is the actual full order that consists of many items that you've bought. So one order consists of many order items. And an order item is just another way of referencing to a specific product. So that's the first field here on the order item. We specify the product, which is a one-to-one -one field with the product that I just showed you now inside the products app. We say, we give it another field, which is, is ordered, and then obviously default is false, and then date added, date ordered. So those are very simple. And then we have the actual order, which is this here. So let me comment that out for a second. So this order, we, we give it a reference code, which is just a character field. The owner is a foreign key with the profile model that I showed you in the beginning, not the default user, the profile. We say that on delete is just set null, which basically means that if you delete an order, it's not going to delete the profile model. We say is ordered is false by default, and then specify the items being a many to many field with this order item model over here. So we can add as many order items to one order. And then I've commented out the payment details field here, which is basically just a foreign key to a payment object, which you could define by yourself as well, which is something to look, look at since this is a shopping cart. And then the date ordered as well. And then just some built-in methods here on, on the actual object. Get cart items, which is just grabbing all the items for the specific order. And then the get, tot, get cart total is summing over the price of the product related with the item for all those items in this order. So we use this notation item.product.price because every item in this items field is an order item. So we grab the product, so item.product, and then dot price is going back to the product model that I just showed you in the beginning. And then define string just to make it look pretty. Cool. So that is the models.py. Quite simple when you actually look at it in the end. And we just these are all the imports that we needed. We didn't actually even need the user. So that is those are the models there. Let's jump into the views. Okay, so there are quite a few views to cover in here, but the main ones I'm going to look through are the add to cart and the update transaction records. So inside views. If we take a look at this add to cart, it's taking in a request and it's taking in keyword arguments. And so the first thing that's happening when you add to cart is we need to actually grab the user profile and we need to get the product that's actually being added into an or, or created into an order item. And so that's what's happening in these first few lines. We get the product and we check if the product is in this request user's profile books already, if it is, then just redirect back to that page and show this message, which says you already own this ebook. And if it doesn't, then continue with the rest of you. And so the way that we're actually filtering the product objects is we're saying the ID is this keyword arguments dot get item ID. And so inside this keyword arguments, which is being passed into the function, there's an item ID parameter. And the reason for that is because in the URL, you're specifying item ID as this inside this URL regular expression. So this item ID, if we go into product list, is being passed by this object.id. So for every single product that we list on the product list, every product has a button which says add to cart. And for that specific product, it has its own ID. So depending on which button you click, it will add the ID of that product as the ID, the item ID, which will go through to this URL. So once you do that, once you click on it, it grabs the item ID or the object ID of the product, passes it into this URL, which goes into this function, and then we can get it from the keyword arguments just like this. And then the rest of this is just creating the order item, creating the actual order, and then adding the order item into the user order dot items uh, or user order dot items. Yeah, so adding that specific order item into there. And then we say if it was created, then we generate a reference code, and I'll show you the function for that in a second. And then we just save the user order as well. 
And then lastly, we just redirect back to that product list page and then pass in this message, which is item added to cart. And that's really the add to cart view. So quite simple when you actually break it down. Then the delete from cart is very straightforward. Again, it takes a request and an item ID. You can you could pass in keyword arguments if you really want to. There's, there's many ways to do this. So the item to delete, we filter the order items by the primary key. If it exists, delete it, redirect back to the same page, and then um, pass in this item has been deleted view. So we're only allowing you to delete it, well, the way it's been designed so far, to delete an, an item from being in the order summary view. So you can't delete it when you're on the product list, but you could change that if you really wanted to. And we could actually put login required above that as well, seeing as it's also above add to cart. Then the order details is just taking you to the order summary page, which is just passing in an order. And this get user pending order is the function we've defined up here. So all this does is it grabs the profile object, uh, query, querying it by the request user, and then filtering the orders by that user profile and only looking for the ones that have not actually been ordered yet because it's a pending order. So if that order exists, then we return the order, otherwise return nothing. So that's what that function does. And you just pass that in here into order details and check out. So that's how you can just easily get the existing order without having to repeat yourself, just to just define a function about everything. And so these two, you can actually see are pretty much the exact same thing. So if you want to, you could actually make that into the, into the same view. And then we have a process payment view, which as I said earlier, is just a dummy view. It's not actually processing any payment, but what you would do here is you would use whatever it is, Braintree, Stripe, or whatever. Uh, you'd actually process the payment, and then what I've done here is I sa I've said redirect into the update records name. So if we go into URLs, the update transaction URL has a name of update records. So it's redirecting us to the shopping cart namespace, and then that name of the URL, which is update records, which is this function here. And you can pass in keyword arguments to that uh, reverse as well. And we do that as we're passing in the, the order ID into those keyword arguments. So we can grab that order ID again in the update transaction records. And that's what we do here. We're passing it into the function. So we're getting it from the keyword arguments of this reverse call. And so in this one, basically what we're doing is we are just adding the item to the user's ebooks. That's essentially what the update transaction is doing. But what I, I find this view to be quite handy because you can handle quite a lot of things in here, such as sending emails, um, updating orders, transactions, a whole bunch of stuff. So the first thing we're doing here is we're getting the actual order that has to be processed, and we're doing that by using the order ID that we've grabbed here in the beginning. So filtering all the orders by the order ID and then grabbing that specific one and then just updating it. So saying that order, first of all, it is now ordered. So we say it is ordered is true. We specify the date ordered as right now and then save it. That's it. And then we get all the items in that order. So we're just saying the order items are order to purchase dot items dot all. So that's grabbing all the items. And when you have, when you call this, this actually generates, we'll just say, a, generates a query set. And I'll also link this in Django's documentation. When you have a query set, you can say that query set dot update and then pass in the fields that you want to update. So instead of having to for loop through every single order item inside this list or query set, you can just say dot update. And then for all those items, it'll update all of them. So we say they're now all ordered. So we say is ordered is true. And we say the date ordered is right now. Again, so one line and does all of that, which is quite nice. Then here, we're just adding the products to the user profile. So we're grabbing the user profile again. And what we're doing is we're getting the products from those items. So even though we've grabbed the items here, 
if you remember back inside the profile here, we've got a many-to-many -many field with products. So here we have items. So we somehow have to now get all the, the products associated with all those items. And we just do that in one line here. So we say the order products is equal to item dot product for item in all those order items. And then that grabs all the product objects. And then here's just another nifty trick, which I'll also link in documentation. We're adding a, a list of objects to a many-to-many -many field. And when you add a list, it's different to adding a query set. When you add a query set, you can just say um, dot add, if I'm not mistaken. Or if you want to just say uh, add one object, you can say dot add. But when you want to add a list, which in this case is being created here, this is an actual list, then you just put a star in front of it and this iterates through all the objects in the list. And then you can say dot save. Then here I've put a to do. So again, this is for payments, which is not covered here. But again, if you did have payments, then you could update those payment records here as well. And then send an email as well. So you can do a lot of stuff here which is nice and convenient. And then just pass in a message and redirect to the user's profile so they can now see the actual order. And then this is just a success view if you actually need it. So those are the actual views. Let's just take another look at the URLs. The add to cart takes this item ID. The order summary doesn't really have anything else. It ends with the dollar there, success as well. And then item delete takes the item ID as well. Checkout ends right there. Payment would look something like this. You take the order ID and then process the payment, look something like that. But I mean, it's not even implemented, so we'll just comment it out. And then we've got the update transaction, which takes in an order ID. And that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at the HTML. But again, that's not really the most difficult part. So the first thing would be the order summary. And so in here, it's just a table. And it's basically checking, well, first it's, it's specifying the headers. So the number of the order, the items, the pr or the item, the price. And then we're using that get cart items method which we specified on the model of the order we're using a for loop counter just as the number getting the product name and then here we're just specifying this href inside this a tag here um, as the delete item url so here you've got another example url passing in the namespace then passing in the name of the url and then passing in the parameter that's required for that URL, which would be the item ID. And then this is just some HTML, so data balloon, and then the class, and then some, uh, some JavaScript here. So on click, we would say confirm delete, which would be something like this, if you really needed it. And then the rest of it is just, if it's empty, say you have no items, um, Otherwise, get the card total if it's not none, show the card total, and then um, you have the continue shopping or it shows add items to cart, and then proceed to checkout um, as well. So if there are some items. So again, this is, this is very basic stuff. And then there's a purchase success as well, and then a checkout. And on checkout, we have the enter voucher code here, which is just... For example, an example here, this doesn't actually work, but this is something that you could look at as well. And then the order summary. So again, getting the actual cart items, specifying the item and the product price, specifying the order total, and then having this form here, which takes you to the process payment URL. So um, you can see this project uses a lot of these URL methods where, where they're the, either the action of a form or they're the href of an actual a tag and it just pushes you through to a, a specific function remembering to pass the csrf token and then literally just copy pasted this form for the pay for the paypal but um, it does the exact same thing 
One more thing to show you here is the generate order ID function, which is just to create a reference code. And so inside shopping cart extras, we have this function define generate order ID. And so all it does is just it, it makes a date string and a, and a random integer, integer string. So it's getting today's date and in this format, so year, month, day, and then just adding the time right now in the second and then creating, well, joining a string uh, with a random choice of digits and then just adding those together. So that's how it creates the order ID and then we, assi we assign that order ID to the reference code here. So that is the generate order ID. So when you put all of that together, um, even though it's not a lot, you can see how functional it is. The actual um, process of going to cart, being able to delete these items from the cart, um, proceeding to the checkout. Oh, so I've commented out something here. Let's go and see if why this isn't working. Okay, so we've got a, a comma at the end here. See if that's all good now. There we go. Refresh this. Takes you to the checkout. There you've got the only object. Pay with it. There you go. And now there's another order that's right there. And then you could continue shopping. So obviously, you can make this a little bit better. Um, if this was an actual digital website, then what you would probably have here is you would have a button that takes you to this product so that you can actually see what it is actually. So for example, if it was an ebook, then it would take you to the page where you can start reading the ebook and there it would check if you are the owner or not. So for example, something like that. So if you like this video, then subscribe for more or check out some of our other tutorials. In the next one, we'll be showing how you can add payments. So in Stripe to something like this. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.